in our news live at 7. Before the courts, two suspects in the murder of former MP Don Saunders arraigned this afternoon. We have the details from inside the courtroom. Not backing down, the government doubling down on the Grand Bahama Port Authority over more than $300 million they allege is owed. And now in custody, two men have been brought in for questioning for the Easter Monday holiday shooting that injured six people. And then in our news at 7.30, sounding off, our Italia Hall speaks to the Grand Bahama business community about the tensions rising between the government and the Grand Bahama Port Authority. Our news live at 7 starts right now. Welcome to our news live at 7. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Marlena Leonard, in for Candino Knowles. Police getting a major break in the case of a mass shooting that injured six people on Easter Monday. The country's top cop telling reporters today that they now have two suspects in custody. He's also revealing a weapon they think was used in the crime has also been recovered. We have more on that investigation in a moment. But first, two men are now headed to trial for the murder of politician Don Saunders, less than two weeks after the robbery and shooting that claimed his life. Our Joshua Williams was in court today and gets us started. 25-year-old Baito Shute of Daisy Road and 21-year-old Nicarson Nixon of Kirk Close Delaport have to now stand trial for the murder of a former MP and deputy speaker. The pair stood before Chief Magistrate Roberto Reckley in court number 9 Monday and charged with the tragic murder of former Tall Pines MP Don Saunders on March 27th. The former parliamentarian and current deputy chairman of the Free National Movement was shot outside of a club that night in Gambier Village. Police later explaining Saunders was shot in the neck after he brushed away the gun pointed at him during the robbery. The scene outside of court was relatively quiet. None of the victim's family attended. Similarly, the courtroom was relatively empty, with only the press and a few of the accused family members in the galley. The pair is also accused of armed robbery of the Rags Bar of $650, as well as the attempted robbery of Saunders. They were not required to enter a plea at Monday's arraignment. Attorney David Cash is representing the accused. He is claiming 25-year-old Shute was assaulted by police while in custody. Chief Magistrate Reckley requested they both be evaluated by a doctor. They were also both informed they can seek bail at the Supreme Court. Now the pair will be back in court on May 30th for service of voluntary bill of indictment papers. Reporting for our news, I'm Joshua Williams. The ongoing battle between the Davis administration and the Grand Bahama Port Authority worsening with the GBPA saying they don't owe the government a dollar. They're also accusing the Davis administration of strong arming them to sell. But the government isn't backing down, still insisting they're owed $300 million. If it's not paid within a certain within the 30 days, um, we could either negotiate going further or we can go to arbitration. The back and forth between the government and the Grand Bahama Port Authority could end up in arbitration proceedings, according to Prime Minister Philip Davis, if that $300 million demand is not met by the 30-day deadline. In a statement, the GBPA called the demand ill-founded. The statement also accused the government of making the demand to force the Hayward and St. George's family to sell their respective 50% equity ownership interests after they rejected its offer to buy them out. The statement also revealed for the past 70 years, no other administration sought to recoup reimbursements from the GBPA. Well, I think that statement in itself acknowledges that there are reimbursables to be had. Both sides have been in a heated public back and forth that the opposition has criticized as inappropriate. Davis says the government is following the arrangements between the government and the Port Authority. The arrangements require the government to lay out a detailed account of what the reimbursables are. The GBPA has said they don't owe the government a dollar. They have the right to look at it and say and challenge what, what is reimbursable or not reimbursable. And they have the right to say, well, we don't owe you all of this. Now, the Prime Minister says the GBPA's statement gives the impression that they had no notice of this demand. He says that's not the case. I can advise the general public that at least more than two years ago, I, I had a conversation with the relevant parties of the Port Authority, and I indicated to them that uh, the Bahamian people could no longer uh, subsidize the port. Reporting for Our News, and Bertha McDermott. And the Prime Minister wasn't the only one to weigh in on the issue. Grand Bahamians also sounding off. Our Italia Hall has that angle coming up on our news at 7.30. And police now have two men in custody for that mass shooting over the Easter Monday holiday that injured six people. 
Police Commissioner Clayton Fernander gave an update on the April 1st case this morning. Police tell us a vehicle pulled up to a business where the victims were standing and the two suspects opened fire. The victims ages 44, 41, 37, 23, 20 and 16 years old were all taken to the hospital. CCTV of the shooting went viral days after the mass shooting. Commissioner of Police Clayton Fernander says a weapon was recovered and they suspect it was used in the crime. We have two individuals in custody. We're looking for two others uh, with respect to this matter. We recovered one of the weapons used in the commission of that offense. So I want to commend the officers who were up and about uh, tirelessly across in, over the weekend and into last week. Look at temperatures. Meteorologist Greg Thompson is standing by in the Weather Center. Greg? Yeah, thanks, Marlene, and a happy Monday evening, everybody. Beautiful conditions on the outside right now. Temperatures are on the mild side, 74 degrees. It is breezy and mild. Winds out of the east-northeast at 18 miles per hour, and they're really blowing out there. Your feels like temperature is a comfortable 73. Temperatures around the islands right now, it is 73 in Freeport, 72 over in Marsh Harbor, Abaco, Governor's Harbor. Here in Alistair Bimini, 74. Great Harbor Key also 74. Nicholson Andros, the big yard Andros, you guys are 73. Central Bahamas, 74s. Kemp's Bay, Georgetown, Deadman's Key. Pick up a pair of 75s in Arthurstown, Cat Island, Coburn Town, San Salvador. And into the Southeast Bahamas, 77, Duncan Town, Ragged Island, 75, Colonel Hill, Cricket Island, Delectable Bay, 76, as well as in Abrams Bay. 77, Providentialis, Tricks and Caicos Islands, and Deep South, Matthew Town, Inagua. You are the warm spot at this hour at 79. Satellite and radar composite showing quiet conditions across the area. High pressure is in charge. We do have a dry air mass in place, but the pressure gradient is starting to tighten. There's a low pressure developing in the Gulf of Mexico, combining with a high that's just to the north of us. That's going to keep things rather breezy across the islands, looking at some uh, increasing winds for the next couple of days, as well as some hazardous boating and beaching for the next several days as well. That's your first look of weather. Stick with us. Look at your extended forecast. Let's do it. up in Earth Month. The Keep Grand Bahama Clean campaign rolls out a series of activities this April. Plus, high school students learning and leading when it comes to backyard farming, showcasing their efforts in a recent exhibit. That's coming up when our news returns. April is both Earth Month and Coastal Awareness Month, and the Keep Grand Bahama Clean initiative has a roster of environmental campaigns and activities ready for the Grand Bahama community to do their part for the environment. The Keep Grand Bahama Clean campaign started in 2006 and has spent the last two decades working to change the culture around littering and the environment on the island. Keep Grand Bahama Clean chairperson Nakira Wilchcomb tells us this. About six years ago, we started an initiative called Partners Against Litter. And it was started during the month of April, which celebrates other environmental initiatives such as Earth Day and Coastal Awareness. And so we wanted to bring attention to the vast amount of litter on our streets that are daily placed there by residents and visitors alike. And so we called together the business community to partner with us to encourage their customers um, to responsibly dispose of debris, whether it be the food box items, the bottles, the, you know, the cans. We want persons to pay attention to the importance of keeping our environment clean by acting responsibly. And you can participate through more than just picking up litter. Keep Grand Bahama Clean representative Cherish Russell lists off some of the month's activities. For the month of April, we have quite a number of activities planned. We started off with a pick your own beach cleanup. Next, we'll have a placard day where different people can volunteer to hold placards throughout the community just to get the message across to keep Grand Bahama clean. We will also be visiting schools, one being a puppet show um, by First Baptist Preschool, the other being a talk and presentation to the youth. Um, the students still and foster the message into them to keep Grand Bahama clean and we'll end off with a scavenger hunt um, in the form of a cleanup. CV Bethel Senior High School is also one of several schools doing their part to encourage backyard agriculture and homegrown food. It was all on display during an exhibit at the Ministry of Education this week. It's an annual effort by the Ministry of Education to showcase the agriculture science units of various schools in the country. One of the agricultural science teachers at CV Bethel shares what they not only grow, but also sell at CV Bethel. 
ranging from leafy greens, kale, um, mustard greens, bok choy, celery, um, pak choy, kale, as I would have mentioned before, and um, too numerous to mention. And with the government's goal of ensuring food security and reaching sustainable food systems by 2050, Johnson says initiatives like this help to show young people the importance of food sustainability and ways they too can do their part. Agriculture prepares you for life, not just for school. Anybody can be engaged in backyard farming because the cost of living is rising and you don't want to be buying everything from the store you must be able to um, subsidize your income. So when you grow, you can reap your onions or garlic or celery in your backyard. That is one or two items that you don't have to um, purchase. When our news comes back from the break, we turn our spotlight to stories making headlines across the world as North Mexico sees day turn to night during today's total solar eclipse. Plus, an investigation underway after an engine cover on a Boeing 737-800 fell off during takeoff and struck a wing flap. And intercepted, the British Royal Navy seizing 440 pounds of drugs valued at over $21 million off the coast of Martinique. We have the details when our news returns. This is our news. Welcome back. We turn our attention now to stories making headlines across the world. A total solar eclipse had millions of people across North and Central America gazing toward the heavens today as the moon completely blocked the sun for more than four minutes in some areas. The astronomical event was visible from Mexico and extended into Texas and across 14 other U.S. states. It culminated in Quebec and four additional provinces in Canada. Eclipse fans gathered in places along the path of totality. Parts of Mexico were briefly plunged into darkness, attracting locals and tourists who equipped themselves with special glasses, telescopes and filters to witness the event. The solar eclipse was visible across Arlington, Texas for the first time since 1878. On average, total solar eclipses occur somewhere on Earth every 18 months. And airline regulators in the U.S. have begun an investigation after an engine cowling on a Boeing 737-800 fell off during takeoff and struck a wing flap. The FAA said Southwest Flight 3695 was on its way to Houston's William P. Hobby Airport and safely returned to the gate at Denver on Sunday morning. Southwest said their maintenance teams are reviewing the aircraft. In response to a request for comment, Boeing pointed to Southwest's statement. The cowling loss comes as the FAA investigates a separate Southwest incident in March. One of its flights strayed off course and flew close to the air traffic control tower at LaGuardia Airport as it attempted a landing in New York. And the Vatican has issued a strong warning against gender theory and said that any gender-affirming surgery risks threatening the unique dignity of a person in a new document signed off and approved by Pope Francis. Titled Infinite Dignity, the declaration focuses on what it describes as a range of threats to human dignity, including poverty, the death penalty, war, assisted dying, abortion, sexual abuse, and the abuse of women. The Pope has, stroke, has spoken out strongly against gender ideology in the past, describing it as ugly for erasing what he says are distinctions between men and women. The British Royal Navy says its warship HMS Trent seized drugs with a street value of $21.1 million in two separate blows to drug runners in the Southern Caribbean. The Royal Navy said British sailors, Royal Marines and a U.S. Coast Guard team on HMS Trent intercepted a smuggling speedboat immediately following a port visit to Martinique. The warship launched sea boats piloted by Royal Marines and 47 Commando to intercept the speedboat, seize the drugs and detain the crew. Less than 48 hours later, HMS Trent intercepted another speedboat. Across the two operations, the Royal Navy said the HMS Trent seized 440 pounds of drugs. Still to come in our news, today in history. Find out interesting facts about the day that was April 8th. And then in our news at 7.30, we take a look at today's solar eclipse and what it looked like here in the Bahamas. 
and Dining for Charity, the Bahamas National Trust raising tens of thousands of dollars for a new national park through their annual Cuban Pig Roast fundraiser. That's coming up when our news returns. Welcome back to Our News. It's now time to turn our spotlight on events that shaped the day that was April 8th. On this day in Bahamian history. On the 8th of April, 1819, William Edward M. Brister was born in Camp Estate, San Salvador. M. Brister was a member of the Executive Council and President of the Legislative Council and served as a member of the Bahamas House of Assembly for over 20 years. He's the son of John M. Brister and Caroline Thurston. His father was a loyalist who came to the colony after the American War of Independence. Today, the ruins of the M. Brister Plantation House on Cat Island and the tombstone of William M. Brister are still visible. Then, in 2011, the Harry C. Moore Library and Information Center at the then College of the Bahamas was officially opened. It marked another milestone of the tertiary institution's move toward university status. The $28 million library, which is located at the southwest quadrant of the college's Oaksfield campus, was constructed to meet the needs of a growing student population. With a holdings capacity of 150,000 volumes, the 60,000-square-foot library can accommodate approximately 650 library users. Fast forward to 2019, police began probing a damning National Sports Authority audit that highlighted questionable spending and a non-transparent contract tendering process. The then Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis told reporters he had forwarded the files to police, while former Youth Sports and Culture Minister Dr. Daniel Johnson appeared on a radio show to passionately defend the ministry he led between 2012 to 2017. Put no nonsense out to the public, you think Danny Johnson might keep some money, kiss my Marine make I can make my own money. I'm going into public life to take none from nobody. Come to help my people, and I'll defend my people to the very end. You ain't got to get used to black dudes like me making money of our own. He used to white fellas making their own money. Mm -hmm. But you ain't still scared of like me having my own. Is anything too good for a freaking young Bahamian, man? Is anything too good for us? You give it to other people, but you ain't going to give it to us with God, my people, and I'll do it again. To watch that story again and for all of today's top stories, visit ournews.bs. Well, that does it for our news at 7. Joining us now is our Italia Hall with the latest headlines. But first, Italia, how was your weekend? I rested. <laughs> I was a little under the weather, so you know, rest is always important. And I drank my orange juice and, you know, I ate and just tried to get myself back together. Still feeling a little, you know, but it happened. What about you? I see that you went to the pig roast. I was there. Yeah. I, was, I feel like it's a can't miss. You yeah. know, it's, like they said, it's their flagship um, fundraiser for the year, and it's it's so worth it. You got the good food, live music. It's a great cause. I believe it was for the Seahorse National Park okay. this year. So I know we're going to hear more about it later. At Seven thirty with our Danielle Miller. Yes. All right. Have I definitely want to. No, but I definitely want to check it out next year. You'll definitely want to after seeing that report for All sure. Right. You'll see what you missed. All right. Thanks so much, Marlena. Well, coming up. Members of the Grand Bahama business community sounding off over the ongoing back and forth between government and the Port Authority. Plus, the Prime Minister talks anti-gang legislation and what's being done to curb crime. And find out why the Bahamas Girls Guides need help raising $100,000. Here are your latest headlines. First tonight on our news live at 7.30, the saga between government and the Grand Bahama Port Authority continues. We have feedback from the Grand Bahama business community tonight. Who suffer? The residents, the investors, the Bahamas suffers when we get caught up in infighting. Also, two men charged for the murder of former Tall Pines member Parliament Don Saunders. We have details from the courtroom. Plus, hear why the nation's leader says following the tabling of the anti-gang bill, the decision will still be up to the courts and later a digital transformation. This as the My Gateway app is adding more services to its platform. We have the full story when our news live at 7.30 returns. Are you or a loved one under medical care? Do you need affordable medical supplies? Ports International is the largest home health care supplier. Medical supplies at the very best price and you can even shop online. From hospital beds to wound care, wheelchairs to walkers, Ports is a one-stop shop for your medical supplies and we accept insurance. We have online shopping and two locations to serve you. 
at the Airport Industrial Park and Shirley Street. We also ship to the Family Islands. Shop online and visit us on Facebook. Call Ports at 377-1771. Welcome to our news. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Natalia Hall. Two men facing a judge as they appeared in court accused of killing former Deputy House Speaker Don Saunders last month. Outside, the courtroom was relatively quiet as none of the victim's family members attended. Our Joshua Williams was inside court where several of the suspect's family members also witnessed the arraignment. We'll get to that story in a moment, but first... The back and forth between the Grand Bahama Port Authority and government is heating up. This as the Port and government released statements over the weekend. It comes following the government accusing the Port Authority of owing them up to $400 million, which the GBPA denies in this report. Members of the Grand Bahama business community are speaking out. This request at this time is poor timing, it's in poor taste, and it's not going to actually help Grand Bahama or the Bahamas, and it makes the Bahamas government, to be counted with you, look real small. The Grand Bahama Port Authority refuting claims by government that the GBPA owes them nearly $400 million. The GBPA warned of the detrimental effects of these events on the city of Freeport and investor confidence. Government responding to the GBPA on Sunday evening saying, after working with an international accounting firm, the government has prepared and presented a detailed review of the amounts owed and other issues which pertain to the Port Authority. Publisher and editor of the Grand Bahama News Courier Fred Stirrup says the situation is disheartening. This business about the um, Port Authority owing $300 million, to me that is outrageous. Just a comment coming from the government if that is in fact true, because I don't understand how anybody could have allow a bill to accrue to $300 million and then just want to have a snap issue on it. Attorney Rangan Johnson supports government in their move against the Port Authority. She says the government has given the GBPA ample time to pay what is owed to the country. She called out previous administrations for not taking the same approach towards the GBPA and hopes this action ends in a friendly way. I'm very glad that the Hawksville agreement is being applied and all the provisions to go with it. And I think we shall win because it is a legitimate, is a legitimate request to receive the funds that due to the country. Well, two men are now headed to trial for the murder of politician Don Saunders less than two weeks after the robbery and shooting claimed his life. Our Joshua Williams was in court. 25-year-old Baito Shute of Daisy Road and 21-year-old Nikarson Nixon of Kirklose Delaport have to now stand trial for the murder of a former MP and deputy speaker. The pair stood before Chief Magistrate Roberto Reckley in court number 9 Monday and charged with the tragic murder of former Tall Pines MP Don Saunders on March 27th. The former parliamentarian and current deputy chairman of the Free National Movement was shot outside of a club that night in Gambier Village. Police later explaining Saunders was shot in the neck after he brushed away the gun pointed at him during the robbery. The scene outside of court was relatively quiet. None of the victim's family attended. Similarly, the courtroom was relatively empty, with only the press and a few of the accused family members in the galley. The pair is also accused of armed robbery of the Rags Bar of $650, as well as the attempted robbery of Saunders. They were not required to enter a plea at Monday's arraignment. Attorney David Cash is representing the accused. He is claiming 25-year-old Shute was assaulted by police while in custody. Chief Magistrate Reckley requested they both be evaluated by a doctor. They were also both informed they can seek bail at the Supreme Court. Now the pair will be back in court on May 30th for service of voluntary bill of indictment papers. Reporting for our news, I'm Joshua Williams. Thanks, Josh. Well, a 21-year-old man has been charged after a man was killed and another injured during a shooting. Nassau Village resident Samuel Higgs is accused of the March 24th murder, 24th murder rather, of Paul Cox and the attempted murder of Dominic Watson. 
The victims were in front of a home on Gilda Street when two gunmen opened fire on them. Cox and Watson were rushed to the hospital where Cox died. Higgs wasn't required to enter pleas to charges of murder and attempted murder when he appeared before Chief Magistrate Roberto Rackley. Bail was denied and he's back in court on May 30th to receive voluntary bill of indictment papers. Well, following the tabling of that anti-gang bill, Prime Minister Philip Davis says the decision will still lie with the courts. The bill will levy a 25-year sentence or $100,000 fine for anyone convicted of gang-related crimes. And then it's the court, so we'll then have to determine what sentence. We have told them what we think they should have, up to 25 years, what the fine should be, up to thousands of dollars. And if it, but it'll be a discretion of the court to determine what the sentencing would be. And I am satisfied that the court, recognizing <laughs> the state of affairs in this country, will judiciously um, um, apply the sentences. The bill came as a part of a commitment made by the Prime Minister earlier the, this year as he released a comprehensive crime plan amid a spike in crime. There have been 37 homicides for the year. Davis says legislators are working to deter criminal activity. We as legislators will do our job. We have put the laws in place that we think would be effective to deter um, association with gangs, to dismantle gangs, and to ensure that recruitment of young people to become gangs will not be, will not be the order of the day. Well, nice weather conditions outside the Capitol on this Monday evening. Meteorologist Greg Thompson is in the Weather Center with your first look at weather. Greg. Yeah, thanks, Italian. and welcome back, everybody, for a quick check on conditions around the islands and outside our studios. 74 degrees, breezy and mild, we'll call it. Your winds out of the east-northeast at 18 miles per hour, and it is a bit on the breezy side out there. Your feels like temperature is a comfortable 73. Sideline radar composite showing dry air mass in place across the area. We're almost cloud-free. High pressure is in charge. Pressure gradient is tightening between a low pressure system over in the Gulf of Mexico and that high pressure sitting across us. So we're looking at some breezy conditions for the next couple of days. So beaching and boating will become a challenge. So we're asking you to exercise some caution. That's a quick check on conditions around the island. Stick with us. Look at your extended forecast still to come. Still to come in our news, more services being added to the My Gateway digital platform. We'll tell you all about the newest edition. Plus, the Bahamas Girls Guide Association asking for corporate Bahamas to step in and assist with a major project. And how did the Bahamas experience today's total eclipse? We have the video of the historic moment straight ahead. More services are being added to the My Gateway digital platform. This time, the Department of Labor is joining the mix. The new services will impact trade unions, industry stakeholders, and digital experts. Director of the Department of Labor, Howard Thompson, says the four new services will be used to streamline operations and enhance efficiency. These My Gateway online services include trade union registration, transfer of trade union license, trade union document request, and report of trade dispute. I am also pleased to announce that on this coming Friday, 12th of April, the Department of Labor in partnership with My Gateway will be hosting a registration drive from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the department's Rosetta Street location. My Gateway currently offers six services for the Department of Labor. According to Department of Labor IT Specialist Tage Seymour, the goal is to make all government services paperless. I'd like to now thank, also thank Ministry of Labor for their cooperation and their, and their eagerness to, to get online to become paperless as we are trying our best within the department to put as many as up to 200 government services online. As of the date, we have 95 services uh, on the digital transformation unit side and also my gateway. And we are scheduled to have about 60 more services by the end of the second quarter. All right, great news. Well, the Bahamas Girls Guides Association is still looking to raise funds for their new 6,200 square foot headquarters on West Bay Street. 
Back in December, the Sandals Foundation donated $100,000 to the Girl Guides, one of the largest donations in Sandals Foundation's history. At the time, the Bahamas Girls Guides Association called on Corporate Bahamas to match the grant to help fund the building's completion. Vice President of the Bahamas Girl Guides Association, Michelle Fields, gives us an update on how things have gone since December. With regards to the um, matching grant, we have reached out to Corporate Bahamas um, for donations for the completion of the building. We're really on a, on a, on a last push to actually, as, as Mrs. Garraway said, said, to get all of the, the um, finishing touches done. We have been um, pleased with so far with the, with the response that we have gotten, but we still, as Mrs. Garraway said, uh, are still about two thirds of the way to go to get to that matching point. So we're hoping that Corporate Bahamas and also former guides um, and friends of guides will also um, dig deep into their pockets to help us to get to that point. They say they need around another $100,000 before they can get their temporary occupancy, which once approved will allow them one year to raise funds needed for an elevator. But if you're not able to donate funds, the association is also welcoming donations in kind. Assistant Chief Commissioner and Properties Committee Chair of the Bahamas Girl Guides Association, Elma Garroway, tells us. We need our second floor furnished with bunk beds, with a twin sets for the leaders, so we can have four leaders, five at a time most likely. We would need all those kinds of things in, and not to mention the outside. We would need our entrance, which is not from the western end, but off Marcus Bethel Way. So we need one or two trees removed. We need um, the road brought up to a certain level, because you see there is a great um, um, decline, you know, descent from the Marcus Bethel Way. We need parking, and so, and we need the landscaping. It's now time for tonight's Financial Market Minute, brought to you by RF your local investment bank. This has been your Financial Market Minute. To explore the best performing mutual funds in the Bahamas, visit our website at www.rfgroup.com. When our news comes back from the break, how did the Bahamas experience today's total eclipse? We caught it on camera. Coming up in sports, Jazz Chisholm and the Marlins get their first win of the season, and Bahamian athletes are on track for a busy summer. And fairly nice weather conditions in the capital on this Monday. Craig is back with your weather forecast when our news returns. Stay with us. This is our news. Welcome back. Jazz Chisholm takes home the Marlins' first win of the season. And Bahamians are promoted in the minor leagues. Here now with our sports presented by 10th year seniors is Ronaldo Dorset and John Mark Nutt. Ronaldo? Thanks, Italia, and welcome to our sports presented by 10th year seniors. I'm Ronaldo Dorset. That's John Mark Nutt. Let's do show. The Miami Marlins' painful losing streak to begin the 2024 MLB season finally came to an end Sunday afternoon. Jazz Chisholm went deep for the second time this season to lead the Marlins to a 10-3 win over the St. Louis Cardinals at Bush Stadium in St. Louis, Missouri. Chisholm's home run traveled 412 feet to right center and sparked a six-run first inning that the Marlins were able to maintain this time. For the three-game series in St. Louis, he went 4-11 for 11 at the plate and finished with three RBI. The nine-game losing streak to start the season was the longest in franchise history to open a campaign. Now that that's over, they 
they continue their road trip looking to stay in the win column against the New York Yankees. Minor League Baseball is underway and Bahamians continue their progression with their respective franchises. Los Angeles Angels prospect Deshaun Knowles was promoted to AAA for the first time in his career and was assigned to the Salt Lake Bees of the Pacific Coast League. In 128 games with the Tri-City Dust Devils and Rocket City Trash Pandas, Knowles hit 249 with 40 RBI and 30 stolen bases and 4 home runs. Since so much needed to work on, but just you know, it's more repetition and more reps. Uh, so, you know, I trans transfer to the infield as well, so. You know, I took ground balls every day, so I kind of just get more reps in the infield. St. Louis Cardinals prospect Adari Grant was promoted to high A for the first time and joined the Palm Beach Cardinals of the Florida State League. In three seasons of rookie ball, Grant hit 221 with 23 RBI and 16 stolen bases. Trying to work my way up to high A, double A. Like just, you know, get a lot of hits. You know, just stay out, just be patient, wait my turn, and then hopefully have a next good year next year. Bahamian elite athletes competed over the weekend at the Miramar Invitational in Florida. Alonzo Russell and Randall Miller both both competed in the 400 meters and posted a pair of seasons best. Russell was first in 45.35 seconds, while Miller finished third in 46 seconds. Charisma Taylor also posted a season's best time of 12.98 seconds in the 100 meter hurdles to finish fourth. Ian Kerr placed seventh in the 200 meters in 21.58 seconds. The previous week at the Florida Relays, the Bahamas competed in the 4x1 for both men and women. The men's team finished 6th in 40.43 seconds, while the women were 7th in 45.62 seconds. The NBA season is coming to an end, where Bahamian players are making their playoff push with their teams. Buddy Heald and the Philadelphia 76ers moved into the Eastern Conference 7th seed with a Sunday's win, 133-126 to double overtime win over the San Antonio Spurs. Heald finished with 10 points. Eric Gordon and the Suns lost a pivotal game to the New Orleans Pelicans last night, 113-105. to Both teams now have identical records of 42 wins and 38 losses in a fight for a sixth spot in the West. Not playoff for later, but DeAndre Aiden finished with 22 points and 14 rebounds in the 124-107 loss to the Boston Celtics. That'll do it for our sports presented by 10th Year Seniors. For John Mark Nutt, I'm Ronaldo Dorsett. Back to the studio. Still ahead on our news tonight, a total solar eclipse getting the attention of the world. Find out how it impacted the Bahamas, plus warm weather conditions on this Monday evening. Craig is back with more weather details right after this break. Welcome back to our news, a total solar eclipse getting the attention of the world and was even visible here in the Bahamas. Our cameras captured these pictures just after three this afternoon as the skies darkened. The event was visible from Mexico and extended into Texas and across 14 other U.S. states. It culminated in Quebec and four additional provinces in Canada. Now, Mexico experienced today's eclipse in full effect with some areas descending into complete darkness. Wow, what a beautiful sight. Well, we have nice weather conditions outside the RNU studios this evening, but will the nice conditions last for the rest of the work week? Greg is back in the Weather Center with your extended forecast. Greg. Yeah, thanks again, Natalia, and welcome back, everybody, for our final check of weather. We have high pressure in charge, and that high is keeping us with a dry air mass in place. That actually allowed us, uh, some of us actually, to watch the uh, solar eclipse earlier today between the hours of 2 and 4 o'clock, with the peak being around 3. So if you had the appropriate apparatus to view this, you should have been able to see a partial uh, solar eclipse earlier today. But that high is going to slide out towards the east, tight pressure gradient with a load developing in the Gulf of Mexico. That's going to keep us on the breezy side over the next couple of days. And of course, our winds are starting to turn more towards the east. So we're looking at some warmer temperatures during that time frame as well. So get outside, enjoy. Boating and beaching will become a challenge for the next couple of days as those seas begin to increase and those winds are going to make it rather choppy out there on the waters. Future forecast showing the quiet conditions across our area. That will continue through Tuesday. Some high level moisture moving across us, not really going to give us much of a problem. And then through Wednesday, we expect things to stay rather quiet. A couple of squatty showers likely during that time frame across the central Bahamas. Boating. All areas, small craft use caution. Your winds will be out of the northeast to east, 15 to 20 knots. They will be gusting at higher times. Seas running four to seven feet over the open waters. High tide is at 8.33 tonight. Low tide, low tide taking place at 2.56 this evening. Here's a look now at your national forecast.
Lovely conditions expected in the extended forecast. Quiet cross area, but it will be on the breezy side. We do expect the frontal boundary to get in here sometime late Thursday and into Friday. So we're looking at some increasing shower chances during that time frame. But once that front goes through, we're looking at nice and lovely weather for the weekend. That's a look at our weather. Make it a great night and stay safe, everybody. All right, thanks so much, Greg. Well, on Saturday, the Bahamas National Trust held its annual pig roast, and like always, this year did not disappoint. Our Daniel Miller fills us in. Have you ever attended a pig roast? Neither did I, until this past Saturday evening. The pig roast was hosted by the Bahamas National Trust at Malis Farm. For more than a decade, the BNC has held the annual event, which was first introduced by one of the founding members of Bacardi. BNC officials call it their flagship fundraising event of the year. This year, all funds raised will go towards the new Seahorse National Park in Hatchet Bay, Eleuthera. It is known to have the densest population of seahorses in the world. And so we are so thankful that the government entrusted us um, in being the landholders and being um, the managers of this special place. Attending the event this year was the wife of the Prime Minister, Anne-Marie Davis. There was food, fun, and of course, a beautiful view. We're bringing everybody together to um, come to this beautiful setting as the sun sets, uh, enjoy some camaraderie, and be able to learn about a cause that they can get behind and support. As a descendant of Hatchet Bay Luthra, I'm very happy to see the support that the Seahorse National Par Park is getting. Reporting for our news, I'm Danielle Miller. All right, seems like a great event, and it's available now on ournews.bs, the story. Thanks so much, Denny. And with that, we thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Natalia Hall. We'll see you tomorrow night. Have a great evening.